Let's pray. You're looking nice. Most high God, we exalt you. We honor you, O oh God, for today. We want to thank you for this last Sunday of this month of October, the month of double grace. It has been you, Lord. And we return glory and praises unto you in Jesus' name. Mighty God, we just trust in you today that you will speak to us, you will send us your word, and that your name alone will glorify, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. So uh, today, by the grace of God, we are finishing this topic, man's deadliest weapon. We had the part one last week, and uh, today, by the grace of God, we are going to finish the topic. We're going to be concluding it, and uh, we are going to read James chapter 3 from verse 6 to 12. We are reading James chapter 3. Yes, today, will you be able to read for us? James chapter 3. James 3. 3 to 4. 6 to 12, please. Okay, 6 to 12. And among all the parts of the body, the tongue is a flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness, corrupting your entire body. It can set your whole life on fire, for it is set on by fire. It is set on fire by hell itself. People can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and fish but no one can tame the tongue. It is restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Sometimes it praises our Lord and Father, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. And so blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. Does a spring of water bubble out with both fresh water and bitter water? Does a fig tree produce olives or a grape, or a grape vine produce figs? No. And you can't draw fresh water from a salty spring. Amen. Hmm. What's what's a powerful member of our body that God has given unto us? Who will ever wonder that the tongue can do such great things? But God has given us strength. And you know, there are some things that we have that we don't know the efficacy, we don't know the power that they have. If you can remember the story of that woman, the uh the wife of the prophet that uh, the prophet that died, and the man was in debt. And the uh, the prophet asked the woman, he said, "What do you have in your house?" And the lady was like, "I don't have anything, except for a small jar of oil." And that was what gave her the turning points for her life. And she didn't know that she had something that could turn her life around. So God has given us this tongue, very small member of our body. And do you know that with that tongue, our destiny is being controlled by that tongue? The Bible says, you know, that tongue, is said, is powerful. So every destiny is at the mercy of the tongue. Every destiny. The destiny of your husband, the destiny of your wife, the destiny of your children, even the destiny of our country is at the mercy of our tongue. So we have to be very careful of the way we use our tongue of the way we put our tongue to use. And I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So your tongue determines whether it is well with you or not. Bible said the power of the tongue, it said out of the same mouth proceeded blessing. That is our memory verse. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, this thing ought not to be. The power of tongue, you have death, you have life in your tongue. So you have to be careful of the way you use the tongue. So let's read the memory verse together. James chapter 3, verse 10. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. So if you don't know how to, how to use your tongue, you are actually at the mercy of another person's tongue. So every man who does not know how to use his tongue, the Bible says your religion is vain, it's nothing. If you don't know how to use your tongue, so let's begin to put our tongues to use from today for good in the name of Jesus. You know, when you declare it, God will deliver it to you. If you proclaim it, then you can claim it. Praise the Lord. Uh, let's move on to our, because of our time, let's quickly move on to our lesson outline. We have two three lesson outline today oh two lesson outline today but it's actually divided into three sections lesson outline one says 
effect of the use of the tongue. You can use your tongue for good. You can use your tongue in a bad way. And you can, and the other one say, be careful, be careful of the way you use your tongue. So let's look at the good way that you can use your tongue. In a, uh, we just actually look at two, Esther. You remember the story of Esther? Esther chapter seven, verse three to four. If somebody can open to that. Esther chapter seven. Sister Hannah, will you be able to read that for us? Esther chapter seven, verse three. The queen Esther answered, if I have found favor with you, your majesty, and if it pleases you, grant me my life. This is my petition and spared my people. This is my request. Hmm. Verse four. Oh. For I and my people have been sold to be destroyed, killed and annihilated. If we had merely been sold as male and female slaves, I would have kept quiet because no such distress would justify disturbing the king. Hmm. You, you can imagine that God is giving you an opportunity. Like, let's assume that God has invited every one of us, which he has actually done today. He has actually invited us to partake on his table. He has actually, for us to come and dine with him, and even, you know, relate with him. I have a fellowship with him. And that was what he studied, Queen he studied. He invited her husband to a table and some other people. And there, the man asked her, what do you want? So I hear the Lord asking you today, what do you want? I hear the Lord asking you today, what actually is going on in your life that you need an answer to, you know? And the Bible say, as you have spoken in my ear, so will I do unto you. So make use of your tongue today. Declare positive things into your life. Declare positive, positive things. No matter the challenge, no matter the problem, you can turn it around. You can just open your mouth in Psalm 81, Psalm 81, verse 10 to 15. Psalm 81. Because I, I can hear the Lord. It's not just about using our tongue. It's about... We are in the presence of God today. And God, wherever you are, is the presence of God. Whether you are at work or you are at home, is the presence of God. Psalm 81 verse, from verse 10, Bible say, For it was high, the Lord your God, who rescued you from the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it with good things. Open your mouth wide. So just like Esther did, or Esther opened her mouth. And she asked for, the, for, 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 for salvation for herself and her people, and she was granted. So whatever you ask of God today, no matter the challenge, no matter how big it is, the Lord is able to turn it around for your God. And you know, verse 11, unfortunately, the Bible says, but no, my people would not listen. Israel did not want me around. So I let them follow their own stubborn desire, living according to, our, to their own ideas. All that my people will listen, all that this prayer will follow me, walking in my path. How quickly I would then subdue their enemies, how soon my hands will be upon their foes. That is what God wants you to do. Say, open your mouth and I will fill your mouth with good things. Has the Lord to change the situation instead of complaining. If you can remember the story of the Israelite very well, the reason why some of them did not make it to the promised land was because they were complaining, they were rumbling, they were every little thing they complained. And that is also what we do. You know, we are quick to judge others. But I want to ask you, how many times have you grumbled? If maybe you have prayed for something and you have not received an answer and it's like, oh, I worship God. I am doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. And you know, God is faithful. And you start complaining. You can remember that Anna, when Hannah went to Shiloh, she did not complain. She was just asking God that God just give me this. God, she did not say, oh, why did you give my, 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 the second wife? Why did you, why did you give us so many children? And I have none. That would have been a complaint. But you know what? God is not ready to listen to your complaint. God said, open your mouth wide and I will fill it with good things. And I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus name. The Bible said the tongue is full of deadly poison, deadly poison. And you can imagine that 
when you begin to spill out poison onto others, what do you think will be happening to them? Like I said, your destiny, the destiny of your husband, the destiny of your wife, the destiny of your children, the destiny of your country is in your hand. And as women of God, as men of God, as children of God, let us use our tongue wisely. Esther used our tongue wisely. And our nation, our people, they were saved. Hallelujah. Naaman, what about Naaman? Second Kings chapter five, verse one to four. I don't know whether maybe we can just read that, then we can move on to the other one. Or uh, Second King chapter five. If you are there, you can read for us. Second Kings five. Okay, yes, sir. Sorry. Chapter five. Now, Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great man. Was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master, because. By him, the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but a leper too. And the Syrians had gone out on raids and had brought back captive, and had brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. Three, then she said to her mistress, if only my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria, for he would heal him of his leprosy. Four, and Naaman went in and told his master, saying, Thus and thus said the girl who is from the land of Israel. Should I read five? Yeah, no, that's okay. That's okay. You know, you can imagine that that woman, that lady was just like an house help, like a maid in that, in that house, in that family. And she used her tongue wisely. She spoke out. And she delivered healing into the hands of Neymar. Neymar had been going around with that leprosy for long. And just because that lady spoke out, she spoke healing into that man's life. And then the Lord healed him. So we, wherever you have, you find yourself and you need to speak out, that you know whatever you say. In fact, you know that as a child of God, you have power in your mouth. Our tongues are already anointed. Your tongue is not ordinary. You can declare salvation. You can declare woes. And so make use of your tongue. If you see anybody in problem, in any challenging situation, you can use your tongue wisely and bring the person out of that woes or that problem that they might be. In Isaiah 54, verse 1, uh, I want us to read uh, maybe the King James Version, Isaiah Isaiah 54, verse 14 and 15. The Bible says, in righteousness, you shall be established. You shall be far from oppression, for you shall not fear. And from terror, for it shall not come near you. Indeed, they shall surely assemble, but not because of me. Whoever assemble against you shall fall for your sake. So you can declare it that will so ever speak against your life in a negative way, they will fall. And you know, when people declare positive things into your life, you can also bring it to pass that God will help you. And the Lord will surely do so in Jesus' name. So as believers, we have power in our mouth. You can declare things, positive things. Even when things are going wrong, Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Let the sick say, I am healed. Deliver yourself from negative world. Deliver yourself from saying negative things into your, into your life. Many of us, we, we are quick to judge ourselves. We are quick to say, oh, you know, oh, I'm, uh, uh, I'm alive by God's grace. You know you, the way you can declare negative things into your life. Let us stop that as Christians. Your mouth, God has given you a weapon. He says, our man's deadliest weapon, your mouth, your tongue is a weapon. It's a weapon that you can use to deliver yourself from the attack of the enemy. And it's a weapon that you can also use to put yourself in any problem. As Christians, let us be wise. Hallelujah. Let us move to the second outline, uh, the B part of second outline. He said the bad. He said there are examples of death or sorrow caused by the wrong use of tongue. And they include the following. You can remember the 10 spies. That's a very wonderful uh, example. In Numbers chapter 14, maybe we should read 27, 28 before we read 36 to 37. 
Isaiah number, uh, number 14, Numbers chapter 14, somebody can read 27 to 28. The, you know, God has already given them that I'm giving you this promised land. I'm taking you and You know, when God says it, he will surely bring it to pass. But do you know that, we are, that, thank God we are talking about the promises of God this month. Many of us, God has given us promises, many good promises, but our tongue has actually delayed us from getting into that promised land. Many of us, we have actually missed out of the plans of God, just because of the way we use our tongue. Just because of the, that was the same way he, he gave me that promise and it didn't come to pass. But you know, if you lay claim onto God is not a man, Bible say, God is not a man that he should lie. The Israelite God promised them a promise, a, 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 a place, a Canaan land. And they, they, they just took the world like, like a vain thing. Numbers chapter 14, who is reading 27 to 28 for us? I can read it. Okay, ma, go ahead, ma. How long shall I bear with this evil congregation who complain against me? I have heard the complaints which the children of Israel make against me. 28, say to them, as I live, says the Lord, just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I will do to you, praise the Lord. Can you imagine that? So as you have spoken in my hearing, so I will do to you. We have to be careful of what we say. We have to be careful of what we utter. We have to, even when things, you can imagine that woman, you remember that story of the woman that lost a child? The man of God, you know, I think it wasn't even the man of God. It was a Gehazi that has her. Is everything well with you? What did, even when the husband has her, he said, it is well. It is well. Declare to your life that it is well with you. I am strong. I am strong. I am old in the name of Jesus. I am rich. I am not poor. Declare it. Bible says, the way whatever you speak into his hearing, so will I do unto you. So let's read 36 verse and 37 of the same number, chapter 14. Bible says, now the men whom Moses sent to spy out the land, who returned and made all the congregation complain against him by bringing a bad report of the land. Those very men who brought the evil report about the land died by the plague before the law. The people that brought bad reports, that use their mouth negatively, the Bible said they die by the plague before the Lord. But Joshua, the son of Nun and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, remained alive. Why? Of the men who went to spare her the land. Why? Because they declared, they did not see the, the, the men of Anak. They did not see the giants. They saw God able to, to, to subdue those, those problems before them. They are the mountain. They say, we are able to go up to the mountain because God is with you. No matter the challenges that you may be going up today, believe that God is with you as a mighty, terrible one, that he will, he will bring you through it and he will help you to overcome whatever the challenge or the problem. Let's begin to make use of our tongue and begin to declare all some things into our life and so shall it be in Jesus' name. And because of our time, let's look at Ananiah and Sapphira in Acts chapter five from verse, from verse five to 10. You can imagine that both of them, they lied. Ananiah lied, they actually connived together to lie against the Holy Spirit. They, and they were not, not that they were, not that they were forced to bring the, 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 uh, the product to church. They, they, they were not forced, but they, they lied against the Holy Spirit. They, they did not say the awesome truth. And you know what? They died because of it. You have to be careful of what you say. You have to be careful of what you declare. I don't know how many of us pay our tithes and we don't even pay the, we, you, don't, you only pay, tithe is 10% of your income, but you, you think it's too much. You only pay 5% or 6%. Who knows, right? But you know what? The Holy Spirit sees everything. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Let's move on to the second part of line. We only have 10 minutes. Be careful. The word coming out of the mouth and powerful. And we should be mindful of what we say. We have to be careful of what we say. We have to be careful of what we declare into our lives. And uh, in uh, Luke chapter 21, I actually want us to read that. Luke chapter 21. That was the word of God for me today. And I believe it's also very 
important for this particular uh, topic we're looking at. Luke chapter 12, from verse 12 to 15. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. Oh, sorry, Luke 21. Oh. Yeah, that's Luke 21. Yeah. Yes, yeah, 12 to 15. So. I'm but before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. And then that it, that, that's, that's enough, sister. That's, okay. that's the word I actually want us to look at. He said, but it will turn out for you as an occasion for testimony. Whatever you are going through right now, whatever the challenge that you may be facing, the Bible says, for it shall turn out for you a testimony. It shall turn out for you a testimony. You are coming forth, we are coming forth with a testimony because the Lord will turn it around. So begin to declare your testimony, no matter the challenge, declare your testimony. Are you trusting God for a child instead of complaining? Begin to testify that you are coming forth with your child. Are you trusting God for healing? Begin to declare that God will heal you. Are you trusting God for whatsoever you are trusting God for? Let's begin to declare that it, it is turned out for me, a testimony. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Parent to children, Numbers 23, verse 20. And uh, you know, if you read uh, uh, Genesis 49, 1 to 33, it's a fairly long passage. That was when, or uh, I think it was, uh, let's just read Numbers, Numbers 23, verse 20. Like when somebody was also declaring to each of our children, Jacob was declaring each to each of, our, of his children, the promises of God, and he was praying for them. Numbers 23, verse 20. So let's be careful of what we declare into the lives of our children. Numbers 23. As a young, as a young girl, I didn't know the importance of that. I remember then when I was then my mom, instead of her saying negative words, she, she would just be saying, you will hear the word of God. You will do the counsel of God. You will not work in your own counsel. I used to wonder, I've offended you. Why are you praying for me? Now I know the reason. So sometimes when our children, I know we can get so hungry and you begin to say negative word. Let's watch our mouths as parents and declare something nice into the, into the lives of our children. Number 23, verse 20. Said, behold, I have received a command to bless. He has blessed and I cannot reverse it. Yeah, we have received as parents, we have received the command to bless our children. We have received the command to bless. He has blessed, God has blessed us and he cannot reverse it. And do you know that if you also curse your children, nobody can reverse it except God. So be careful of what you declare into their lives. Be careful of what you say into them. They might make you hungry. Caution yourself, control yourself. Declare good words into their lives and so shall it be in Jesus' name. What about husband to wives? Even as wives to husband, we have to be careful of what to say. You can imagine what happened between Jacob and Rachel. Rachel has actually stolen something from her, from her dad. And the man said in Genesis 31, let's quickly read it. Genesis 31, Jacob has said, whosoever has stolen that idol, right, that the person will die. And he did not know that his wife had actually stolen the hide-up. And do you know what happened to Rachel? Rachel died when she was having her second baby, just because of the declaration of that man, of the husband. Let's be careful of what we say to our husband. You know, we can get hungry. We can, be hang uh, we can get hungry with each other. We can have a little bit of quarrel. But you know what? Caution yourself. Because we have angels around us. And the Bible says we have ministry angels. Whatever you say to them, they are going to go ahead and do it. And if Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 6, Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 6, the Bible says we should be careful of what to say. Because you have angels around you and they are ministry angels. And, what, and you cannot go back and say, oh, I did not say that. Oh, I was just joking. The Bible says, do not let your mouth cause your flesh to sin. Now say before the messenger of God that it was an error. Say, do not let your mouth cause your flesh to sin. Now say before the messenger of God, which is an angel of God, that it was an error. 
Why should God be angry at your excuse and destroy the works of your hand? Be careful of what you say. You have angels, ministry. We all have ministry angels. You know that, right? And so whatever you say, they're going to go ahead and do it. Be careful. Question yourself. You know, as, as young people then, I remember when there was a silence in our class, some people would say, oh, the angel of God has just passed. The angels of God, they are there all the time to do whatever you say. They are ministry angels. Let us watch our mouth. Let us be careful of what we utter. Praise the Lord. And uh, superior to subordinate, we have to be careful of the way we use our tongue. You can imagine that Peter, if Jesus has not prayed for Peter, do you know that he would have, he would have been lost like Judas was lost? But because he was, Jesus prayed for him before he was actually being tempted, before he faced the temptation, Jesus prayed for him. Bible said, Jesus pray for that it will not be swift like a weight. Jesus pray for him. And I pray that all of us will be saved as Christ will pray for us today because he's actually praying for us, interceding for us. The Lord will stand by us wherever you are, whatever thing that you may be going through, wherever the Lord will stand by you and you will be able to overcome in Jesus' name. So let us watch our mouth and be careful of what to say. You know, your mouth determines where you go in life. Your tongue determines your destiny. And whatever you proclaim, that is what you can lay hold on. If you proclaim positive things in your life, the Lord will surely bring it to pass in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, any question before we pray? We are going yes, to I have a question. Pray. Okay, yes, ma'am. Yeah, um, my question brothers, around reversing maybe a cause that parents have placed on their children or something. And I know, like our topic says, the power of the tongue, I mean, the power of um, your tongue has the power, you know, to make life or to bring death. And if one stays it, say you cause people, and then you come around and reverse it, since you have both powers. I'm wondering why it wouldn't work, because he it said it's only God that can reverse it. And instances, like parents, maybe old parents, there are times when maybe children did something wrong to their parents when they were growing up. When those parents and the parents cause them when they are old or maybe when they're about to die, they usually come. I've seen one that happened before me here and reverse all the causes. Are you saying those would not work? Okay. So at that particular time where you say it, but do you know that is, when you go back to God and ask God to help you, it is God that can reverse it, right? So you as a parent, if you have declared something to the lives of your children, you can also go back and reverse it, and God is able to reverse it. That's what I mean. Is that okay? okay. But you, yeah, have okay. To claim, you have to proclaim it again, that this is what I said, I'm reversing it. God have mercy on me, reverse yeah. it, and God is able to do it. Okay. You know? yeah. Thank you. Like, like uh, somebody, I think it was uh, Gio that said, if you're, if, if, if uh, as, a, as a parent, if you place a curse on your parent, or on your children, you, you can reverse it, your pastor, somebody of higher authority, and God is the highest authority, right? Somebody of higher authority can reverse that cause. You understand? Hello? Are you hearing me? So somebody of higher authority can reverse the cause. Yes, I'm but hearing you. Yes. Highest authority is God. He's the only one that can do that. He said, I have received the power to bless. I have received the power to bless. I have received the command to bless and I will bless, and nobody can reverse it. So we have to be careful. The key thing is that be careful of what you declare into the lives of your children, of your household, and of your nation. Like our nation, Nigeria, I know many of us, we all say, not Nigeria, I don't know how. But instead of condemning the country, instead of condemning wherever country, even Canada, let's begin to declare that this land will be healed in the name of Jesus. Our land is healed. This COVID, somebody said, I don't know whether it's going to, it's going to be over. We can declare and head onto it. It's a plague, and the Lord can bring an end onto it. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. One more thing, man. Sorry. Yes, ma One more thing. I'm asking too many questions. I need clarity. There have okay. been times when, like, some parents, out of anger or annoyance, caused their children, and the children really they didn't do anything to them that caused. Like, they, 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 and... What I'm trying to say, they didn't do anything. And now their parents cost them. Would but those causes have effects? You know, the Bible says, cost, costless shall not come. 
if you have not done anything, that cause we have no hold in your life. But if you have done something, ah, you have to go and cry unto God and ask God to help you. Because of our time, it's 10, it's 10 a.m. So maybe one of the days again, we can look at those questions and you can, you can send your questions to me. We can put them together and one day we'll be able to look at those and answer the questions. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. In just one word, I want you to open your mouth. Bible say, open your mouth wide and I will feel it. In whatever cost that you may be going through or whatever thing that you have declared negatively into your life, into the life of your household, ask, ask God for help today. Say, Lord, I reverse those negative words I have spoken into my life and I ask that you will break such causes. Let an end come unto you today. In the name of Jesus, we reverse every negative word that we have spoken into our life, into our country, into the life of our families. Lord, we reverse them. And we ask that you will roll away those curses in the name of Jesus. And you will bring healing to our lives and our destinies in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. I'm so sorry we have run out of time. Next week, by the grace of God, we are able to go over something again. If you have so many questions, we'll do that. God bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday. God bless you. Bye.